Hi, my name is Bridget Minimal. I'm a poet. I'm a writer as well, but I mostly spend my time writing poems about things that inspire me. I'm pretty sure that my favourite historic place is maybe one of the biggest historic places close to where I grew up in South East London. Uh, so I choose the Greenwich Observatory. I have loads of memories of going there as a child. Uh, pretty much every school kid in South East London was dragged to the Greenwich Observatory and the museum and all of that. Uh, pretty much every year, I think, growing up. And so all of my friends who grew up in the local area, we all had these memories of getting on a bus because it's so close and coming down. And I really vividly remember walking across the green past the museum and walking up the hill and being really small. And over the years, that hill getting shorter and shorter and shorter and to realise how magical um, a building and a space and all the connections it has with time and telling the time and what it what it means that this is like you know I guess you know meantime you know it's 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 the place where we set the world around us which is really nice to think about and I think I remembered the magic and that was about four or five years ago so yeah I have I have a lot of love for it I think it's really important to look after historical places uh, around the country because you know, it's important for us to know our history. It's important for us to know what came before us and to really appreciate that. And also they're very beautiful. Like we're really lucky in this country to have had a real history of preserving historic spaces and loads of countries w that don't have as much of that history. You know, you get signs on places that say established in like 1992 and you're like, oh my God, like <laughs> tack on another like 200 years and then, then it'll be something, you know, in, in the UK. It's really important, I think, to invest in that, to make people really aware of how much they love these spaces, even if they're not, if they don't realise how much they love them. I think when you ask people, they'll definitely say, oh God, I have this space. We, you know, went on honeymoon there. We fell in love here, all of this. But I think it's easy for us to forget that until it's brought up to the surface. And so, yeah, I'd like to hope that from now on anyway, I know I'll be a lot more aware of the buildings and the spaces around me and the history behind them just because writing the poem and doing this project has been really lovely. It's really made me think, why do I appreciate these and why do other people appreciate them? So the poem that I've written was inspired by a lot of different places. Um, places that I hadn't really thought of for a while and then as soon as I sat down they all just started coming out which was really nice. So for one part of the poem I talk about libraries and I've always had a really strong connection with libraries. Uh, it's definitely a bit of a, I don't know what you call it, like a latchkey kid. And so my parents would finish work later than I'd come home from school a lot of the time. And the library was definitely a lovely, safe environment for me to go home. You know, when you're old enough to come home alone, but you're not quite old enough to stay at home by yourself. I would spend like every evening after school there for like an hour, maybe not very long, but just going there, doing my homework. And I made like a new little community that wasn't friends from school and wasn't kids from like the estate I grew up on. It was like a different mix. And I think that was really important. You get a lot of crossing of like class lines and race and culture in libraries because they are, there's no hierarchy. And so I have a real, real love of libraries basically. Um, so there isn't one library that I dedicate that to, but I, you know, everything from the, the British library to like Grovevale down the road from my parents, that's about five meters wide. Uh, they all inspired that. Part of the poem talks about piers and beaches. And, you know, my, my mum actually really loves, uh, in, in like true immigrant fashion, loves the English seaside, finds it very charming. And so I've had lots of day trips, or I did when I was younger, I had lots of day trips going to the seaside. And so we'd go to Cromer and go like crabbing. And I was a bit too old, maybe, at sort of late teens. I found it very, like, I was not impressed. But now I look back and I have a real, a real love for it. And I really remember like walking along the pier and the pier there is really well kept. It's really well preserved and uh, it's relatively busy, I guess, for quite a small stretch of beach. And it's lovely. It's really nice. It's windy. It's always got that crisp feeling. It's got that sea smell that isn't quite fishy, but almost touches on it. Um, and so, yeah, thinking about the pit, I always think of looking through the cracks and there's something slightly dangerous about it. I'm not sure why. Obviously, they're very safe. <laughs> you have hundreds of people walking on the piers around the country, but I always feel a little bit scared in a slightly thrilling way. There are so many beautiful castles in this country. Uh, I looked at Pevensey Castle a lot. That was lovely. Um, and then even just places closer to home, closer to me in London, like the Tower of London, that was really nice to see that and think of 
how many people must have fallen in love there and how many people still must go there on like dates. I just, I, I'm just fascinated by that. But then also just buildings. I, I, I found myself when I was writing the poem, I really found myself looking at the buildings around me, being a little bit more aware and I'm notoriously unobservant. So it was really nice to suddenly be on a bus and actually, you know, take my music out or stop reading my book or looking at my phone and to like look at the buildings around me and that's something I've never really done I've never really been into architecture but now I'm like oh wow this building looks like that building I wonder if the same person designed it and then you look at it look you look it up and they have um so yeah it's been really nice I feel like I've learned a lot more than I expected to write in this poem which is lovely history is one of those loose fractious things isn't it that it means so many different things to different people. It, sometimes it means culture, sometimes it means family, sometimes it means country or heritage. But when it comes to local history, we all are local to somewhere right this moment. Wherever we live right now, we have a local community and a local area that sometimes can feel secondary to like the more immediate small thing of family or the much bigger thing of like heritage and culture. But our local communities are important and uh, to be embedded in the local community, I think you really do need to have a uh, love and an appreciation for, lo for local history and just to know where the space around you has come from, what built it, why is that road here, how did that park get over there, why were these flats built here. I remember uh, finding out a few years ago in somewhere in, I think it's Battersea, there's uh, this like really tall high rise block of flats and I always, they looked so out of place on the landscape and I always wondered why they were there. And a friend was like, oh yeah, it's because it was bombed in the war. And they just had this big crater and the only thing they could fill it was this massive high rise. And now every time I would pass it, I just think, oh my gosh, this has this whole history. And I wonder, does everyone here know that? Does ev I hope they do. Does everyone walking past know that? Definitely not. And suddenly this like, you know, very normal high block like random tower block these two tower blocks had this i just i just felt something and it has this whole history of people who died and houses that were razzed to the ground and bomb shelters that all came spilling out just from this one little fact and so yeah it would be lovely if we all knew, knew those facts and a place you know like this country has a lot of those facts hidden underground we were such an old 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 country um, and there are so many old cities and old docks and old ports. I think it's really important to know the history of uh, who's here and how we got here.